Hello, this is Real World Audio, and I have received two questions on my latest video about how capacitors color the sound. Why do capacitors affect it? So if you change your capacitor into a different one, why does it affect the sound? And uh, for that we have to see what is a capacitor and what does it do. I think all of you have noticed that if you have a cable and, and you change it, it already affects the sound. Like I'm talking about interconnect cables, speaker cables, power cords. And for those of you who have done these changes, like you have tested it one time or a few times changing a speaker cable to a different one and then you barely heard anything, well, I have several videos which talk about why is that happening and that's, uh, that's basically because you can't hear much of the change because your system erases the changes. And there's uh, mechanisms how systems do that. It, the amplifier is the number one responsible who is like that. So if you have certain topologies, then these changes are very little to not audible and in these cases if you change your uh, speaker cables uh, change your internal wires you change capacitors you don't hear uh, the extent of the change that that capacitor or wire brings to your system because your amplifier erases uh, the change uh, however there is still a change and erasing the change affects the end result. Uh, and uh, going back to those cases when you have uh, stereo systems that do not erase the change, which is, I would say, the vast majority of uh, audiophile systems that people use, uh, most audiophiles do hear uh, moderate to big to extreme differences while toying around with different cables and that's because uh, the cable material how what is the metal what is the quality of the metal uh, how is it uh, pulled how how was the metallurgy how how is the process that affects how the uh, metal uh, transmits alternating signal and um, also, the second thing that's really big with cables is the insulating material. Insulating material is uh, highly resistive and it also affects alternating currents, AC signals, which is the music. And now, if you have noticed that just changing a speaker cable has that big of a difference, and, and that's just a few meters long, when you look at a capacitor, the capacitors are basically cables, but they are vastly longer, vastly bigger than a, a speaker cable, a power cord, or an interconnect. So in these cases, you have surface areas uh, which carry the electrons in your interconnect, for example, and there the surface area is uh, relatively little, you know, two meters long uh, cable. Now when you have a capacitor on the capacitor, the surface area that carries the current is tremendous because it's a wide foil or wide foil or film and it's rolled up many many hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands turns and basically we have a surface area in a capacitor that is thousands, millions, billions, or even trillions of times larger than what you have for a piece of interconnect cable. So whatever in effect you observe with, by changing an interconnect cable, uh, what the metal brings to the table, what the insulator used brings to the table, if you have a capacitor made from the same metal, same insulator, it will be uh, millions, billions times bigger change to the signal compared to just using an interconnect. And that's because 
the surface area where the electrons travel is that much bigger compared to an interconnect cable. Now, what else is going on? So, so with the capacitor, based on the insulator used, based on the metal used, the effects will be many, many orders higher than what you see with plain wires or cables. And uh, that's one thing. However, there's another thing, is that uh, capacitors, they are not just a piece of wire. You have two plates, sometimes even more plates. Some capacitors have, have a more complicated structure. And basically the electrons do not flow without interruption. There is a hard block between them and there is an insulator layer. So while in an interconnect cable, the electrons flow in the wire and they bump to the insulator and then bounce back and travel. They have a path, a direct path through the center conductor where they are unhindered. In, in comparison to that with a capacitor, they cannot travel. There's one plate and there's another plate and there's an insulator layer in between. So while in an interconnect cable, most of the electrons travel inside a single wire and relatively few just bounce to the insulator and then bounce back and carry those alterations to the signal that the insulation brings. In a capacitor, 100% of the electrons must go through the insulator that's between the plates. So we have a thousand, millions, billions, trillions times larger surface area where the electrons travel. So uh, all kinds of impurities and problems that we have on the surface count that much more. And when you look at uh, interconnects or other wires, one of the, big, the biggest issues is that on the surface, what sort of impurities, what sort of unevennesses there are. When you have oxidation, it's always on the surface. So, so for the capacitor, this is going to be many, many, many fold higher than, than for a piece of wire. And now we include that everything must go through that insulator. So that insulator is going to change the tonality uh, a lot. But apart from that, there is this second big thing that a capacitor is not a piece of wire, it's a capacitor. So it means that the plates, they store energy. So when the signal, AC signal is coming, it energizes the plate. And then the electrons will jump through the plate when there's enough electrons build up on one plate. However, this build-up and, and this charge is not, uh, not automatic. The plates have to reach a, a certain amount of charge before they can pass on the charge to the second plate. And based on the structure of the capacitor, based on the insulator material, based on the thickness of the plates, uh, these, the build-up of the charge and the release of the charge will occur preferentially at uh, different frequencies. So what does this mean? It means that uh, the capacitor will alter the energy balance. So, so specific frequencies will be over represented compared to other frequencies. So uh, what does this mean in real life? I give you a specific example. For example, you can try out very easy on your, in your crossover uh, you can locate a, a crossover capacitor, maybe let's say you have a 10 microfarad capacitor or 1 microfarad, whatever, and put in there a Solen brand capacitor. Let it break in and listen to it how it sounds. And you will notice that, wow, it has tremendous, very high frequency energy. And... Uh, and for example, in my specific case, I, I did an experiment in my Voice of Lancelot speakers. I put uh, 10 microfarad uh, solens in the high pass filter, and I noticed that the around 10 kilohertz, that's where it, uh, the energy was tremendously boosted. Most of the energy came out in, the, in those high frequencies, around 10 to 12, 14 kilohertz. But going lower, around uh, 
below like uh, four or five kilohertz, it, it really sagged. I had very little energy coming out. And, and I changed it to a Mundorf Evo oil, let it break in. And now the, it, it kind of reversed so that 10 kilohertz giant peak disappeared and energy below 5 kilohertz tremendously came in like like uh, everything had way more body it, it almost felt as if uh, the base got way stronger even though the driver uh, only uh, works down to 500 hertz but uh, like between 500 hertz and 2 kilohertz that's where a lot of uh, that energy uh, comes from the sound that gives the feeling of impact for the bass and and that's what you can uh, what what I experienced with this case that like a Mundo of Evo oil that has a much more balanced uh, frequency distribution for the sound and uh, there was no extra hump at the 10 kilohertz range and, and it was more filling out the lower frequencies and uh, you can observe all kinds of effects uh, for any every capacitor that you try out each of them will have uh, different uh, preferences at different frequencies some will have uh, distortion added because of the insulator material and poor quality metal used so the solar not only shifted the frequency balance but introduced a lot of uh, problems so the the highs were not just bounced up so a lot of them but there was a lot of harshness and distortion in them because of the poor quality insulator and not as good quality metal use and uh, i think that's it that that was a well-rounded uh, response for the question so that's why capacitors color the sound and the higher uh, the capacitance of the capacitor the more it will color the sound because you have uh, just m that much more uh, surface that's communicating the signal. So if you have a 1 microfarad capacitor versus 1000 microfarad, the 1000 microfarad, if they are equal in every other construction, same brand, same series, the 1000 microfarad has exactly 1000 times bigger surface area. So it has 1000 times... Uh, the insulator has 1000 times bigger impact in communicating that signal uh, the metal quality has 1000 times bigger impact uh, how it goes through and the construction also affects it 1000 times greater and for example in solid state amplifiers there's those very high capacitance capacitors like 50000 microfarad or even higher in the power supply well those affect the sound uh, that much and in vacuum tube amplifiers, you typically see much lower capacitances and they inject uh, changes to the sound that much less. So I hope this really helped everyone to get an idea what's going on with capacitors. Please like my videos. Uh, that will help others to see them. I'm not making money out of these. And... Uh, Please subscribe if you are new and you just found it because that will help you to find more of my videos because most likely you will not run into any of my videos again. It's just a tiny little channel and it's usually by pure luck that you run across. Bye bye.